This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2017 Salem Model 30 KQ BSS. All right. I'm on the door side of the trailer. Okay, so we have an outside kitchen here. running water and a 110 AC refrigerator. Keep in mind also down here we have an LP quick connect to hook up a, a, any low pressure LP appliance, a grill or a griddle, whatever. Okay. You, are, you have power stabilizers so you just have one switch for both of the back and another switch for both of the front. You can see that right there. Power awning, outside speakers. Now this is the, the vent for the range hood. If you're going to use the fan uh, over your, your range, you have to open this baffle up so it flaps freely. Otherwise you push it shut like that. When you're not venting, it should be shut. The, uh, the service panel for your refrigerator. Always have this hose hanging out so that connotation from the refrigerator can, can uh, drain to the outside. This is um, this is the fill for your fresh water tank. Um, you have a fresh water tank here. That you'll, you're only going to use it when you go, go, you're staying at a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites. You can pre-fill the tank and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. Most places these days have uh, city water so you'll hook that up on the other side. I'll show you when we get over there but uh, generally speaking, you'll use city water, but those times when you don't have plumbing on the campsite, you'll pre-fill this tank and pump the water. Okay. This is your water heater. It works on gas and electric. Keep in mind that there's a switch here, if you can see it, off and on, right? Uh, that operates the electric heating element that's behind this, this cover here. This is where you drain the water heater at, inch and a sixteenth, uh, six point socket. Okay. The other switches, or other switch, uh, is on the inside of the trailer. I'll show you that when we get there. Okay. That's your switch for your front stabilizers. Your hitch, which will show you how it works when you come to pick up the trailer. That's just in case you want to, you want to get a battery charger to, uh, solar panel to charge the battery. You can uh, plug it in right there. It just charges the battery. It doesn't run the whole trailer. Okay, you got a power tongue jack. Looks like a brand new one put on for you. Um, you got a deep cycle marine battery. Two LP tanks. Okay. Let me see here. Alrighty. Good. So let's walk toward, towards the back here. So, you have a power cord that pulls out, it's 30 feet long, 30 amp. You have your uh, city water hook up here. I told, showed you where you would plug in the, um, or where you would you'd fill the fresh water tank if you don't have city water on your campsite, but generally speaking you would just hook the hose right into here, turn it on, and you're, you've got city water. Okay, this is just cable and satellite through to the inside. And these are your dump valves. You got two gray tanks. You can see the gray valves and a black. So you're always going to dump the black first. Then you dump the two gray, just because it's cleaner water than the black water. The black water is toilet water and waste. The gray is sink and shower water. So you just dump it in that order, just because the the gray water will help clean off the black water out of the hose and stuff. All right. Um. This housing showing us that we're pre-wired for a backup camera, so you can you know that. There's also a uh, an outside shower slash sprayer right there. And while we're looking up, remember every manufacturer recommends every 90 days or three times a season, the spring, the summer, and the fall. You go up on the roof, or have someone go up on the roof and look around, make sure all the seals are good and tight, and they're not um, no cracking or separation starting. Okay.
Everybody owns a trailer should inspect the roof on a regular basis. It's an important thing to do. Okay, so now we're inside. This is your control panel. Battery charge, fresh water tank has a little water in it, but we're still testing it. Black water is empty, gray is empty, galley is empty. The galley is a gray tank. It's a, sometimes it's called galley number two. Sometimes they call it a, or I mean gray number two. Sometimes they call it a galley. It's called a galley as for this, the uh, kitchen sink. Okay. Uh, your slide out switch here and your awning switch here. Remember, uh, for the awning, never leave it out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, then you roll the awning in so it doesn't get damaged, okay? Uh, your water pump, onboard pump, do you use this to winterize the trailer? Plus, if you have water in the fresh water tank, you just turn it on there. To light your, I showed you the electric switch for your uh, water heater. This is for gas right here to light it on gas, okay? Okay, you have uh, a uh, radio with a disc player. It also has Bluetooth on it, I can see, and you can also stream off this USB right here. It takes an SD card from your camera if you got one. Okay. So, you have three speaker zones. A is in this area, B is the front bedroom, C would be outside. Uh, like I said, you can hook up with Bluetooth and you can stream from your phone or tablet. You can play DVDs and CDs right here, and you can stream off this USB also. So there's a lot that you can do with it. TV would go right here, of course. Um, okay, we're looking this way. You have, you can also mount another TV on this side if you choose to. Let me see what we've got here. Yeah, so you you put the wire the cables through there and patch them into the other side. Okay, that's your emergency window. You just basically. If you have to escape and push that all the way through, then you grab a hold of the red tab and pull the screen out, and that way you can escape in an emergency. Also, the the bed folds up, so you got like a foot locker underneath it. Okay. This light right there is for your ground effects. It's got a blue blue light that goes around the outside perimeter of the trailer. That's what that's for. All right. You have a. Let me see what we got here. This this sofa jack jackknife's flat to turn into a bed. Uh, you have so, also have storage underneath. This table, you can take the two poles out, set the tabletop down on the cleats and then fill in the space with the back cushions and you can turn this into another bed. Okay, you have a kind of a neat thing that folds out here with, with storage. I don't know exactly what you would call it. Is that is that a bar? I mean, what is that? But I'm not sure what the technical term is, but it's, it's kind of neat. Okay. Um, just so you know, the, the water heater is in camping mode right now, right? You, you have to bypass it before you put um, antifreeze into the system. This is it on the outside. I showed you that before. But if you follow right inside to the kitchen, I'll show you where the valves are at for the bypass valves, just where to find them. You look over this panel right here and down with a flashlight and you'll see the back of the water heater plus the valves. Oh, like I said, always make sure there's water in the water heater before you turn on any energy source. You don't want to run it dry. Okay. All right. So I told you you can vent to the outside. That's done here. I told you about the baffle already. There's a light there. Your microwave works like any other microwave. Okay. Your range, you just spark to light it. Let me see if he's got the gas on. There we go. Turn this one on. There we go. So, you three burners, three three uh, knobs, of course, to light the um, oven, which looks like it's never been used before. We see that all the time, though. It's not uncommon to see them never used. So basically, at the back here, all the way to the back, there's a pilot light. So you need a grill lighter, okay, with a long neck on it. Then you're just going to come up here to the oven knob. You're going to go to pilot. You depress it and hold it in. Continue to hold it in, you'll take your grill lighter, you'll light the pilot light back there. After it lights, you still hold it for another 10 seconds to heat it up. Then, after it's heated up, you'll go to operating temperature. It cycles on and off like an oven does, but when you go back to off, the flame goes out, of course, but so does the pilot light, so you have to relight it each time. Okay, refrigerator is a Dometic gas absorption refrigerator. That means it'll run on 110 AC or on LP gas. So we just have two buttons up here. This is on and off, of course. 
this is gas, that's auto. Auto means electric. You're almost always going to run it like this. The reason they call it auto is it automatically seeks out 110 AC. If it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to gas. Or, let's say you, uh, you leave early in the morning to go adventuring in town or someplace, and uh, an hour after you leave, the power goes out at the campsite. Well, it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil the food. Uh, so it's an auto, and that's where you'll put it generally is on auto. The only other thing to know about it is this plastic device here with the, with the a cable coming out of it, that's called a thermistor. You can see right now the wire is taut. That's what, the way you, you want it to be. You want it to be pushed up all that way. If you look at that sticker there, it says the higher you go with it, the cooler it gets in the refrigerator. So generally you're going to have it up as high as it goes. I mean, you might have to back it off if it's cold outside or something, but generally speaking, you're going to have it up all the way. Okay, this is your thermostat. You hit it once, the mode wants to light it up. Then you go to auto fan, which is, uh, uh, and then auto AC. I always try to use auto, and auto furnace, and then off. Auto fan is uh, just the air conditioner running without the compressor, so it just circulates air. Try to always leave them on, everything on auto, and um, there's about a six second delay time. It's a lag time. Like if I turn on the air conditioner, here, let's do it, I'll show you. If I turn on the air conditioner, there's going to be a a delay. And there it goes right there. So that's 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 normal for this uh, setup. It's always that's the way it operates. Um, and there'll be a lag time when they shut off too. But okay. So always use your fan in your bathroom when you're using the shower. You want to pull the humidity out. The uh, sink in the shower work like any other sink and shower. Uh, this GFCI. Remember, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. So if you pop the plug on the outside is going to have to be set inside. Also, um, never run your toilet without chemical in it. So you have a flush pedal here. You can see it right down there, right? That's the flush pedal. You, when, you, when your black tank's empty, you're, you're pulled into the campground, you're starting off, so you're going to take your chemical, whichever brand you use, you'll put one dose right in there, right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal. When you do that, the trap opens, and water will start flowing into the black tank below. It flushes. Um, you stand on that pedal till you put about a gallon or so of water in the tank. There's no way to tell exactly what a gallon is, but you just it doesn't have to be exact. You're just making sure there's some water in the tank with chemical before you start using it. If you don't do that, you'll regret it, and you'll never do it again. So the smell will be very bad, and uh, it can also get hard as a rock. Um, so you always want water and chemical in it. All right. This device here is is your LP. Uh, uh, LP detector and carbon monoxide detector. Uh, let me make sure it's both here. Yes, yes. So it should always be green like that. If it's not, you want to get it serviced. If it goes off, you take everybody outside, uh, shut the gas off of the front, and figure out what's going on. You can push a button on this and set it on self test. So I, I recommend doing it once a year. So just make sure everything works, but it'll run through a self test. Okay. Alrighty. So one other thing here somewhere. Unless it's in the back room, let me look here. Is the power converter? Let me find it. I guess it's back here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So this device here is called the power converter. It converts 110 AC over to 12 volt DC. All right. So let me open it up and show you how that happens. This side on the left side is is 110 AC. You got regular household type circuit breakers here. They're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted over to 12 volt DC, right? You got 12 volt fuses here, they're all labeled. So that's where the DC power comes from in, in your trailer. It can draw it from the battery, or it can, when you're plugged in, it'll get it from, from this uh, power converter. Now if any of those fuses were to blow, you see there's a tinted piece of tinted plastic right there. You can actually see it glowing through that, so you would know. And also, when you're plugged in, it's this is a battery charger also, so if you're plugged in, to regular AC power, it'll keep your battery charged up for you. So it uh, supplies it's it's your your um, your circuit breaker box and your for for the 110 AC. It's a fuse box for 12 volt DC, and it charges your battery. Okay. All right. So this can be converted down also into another bed if you want to. You can fold this top bed down into another bed, and then you've got this one up here. 
So we got a lot of sleeping space. There's antenna and power for a ray or for a, a television. Okay. Your TV antenna, you crank it up and down right here. Always make sure when you crank it down that these two um, markers right here are both lined up. Therefore, when you put it down, it'll, it'll sit in the right position on the roof. So always line these up before you bring it down, okay? Uh, you got speakers for, I guess this is a 5.1. I'm not sure what system this is. But anyway, you have speakers. Um, this is a remote control for, uh, for your uh, slide out and your awning, things like that, okay? All right. I think that pretty much covers it. So thanks for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Remember what I said about inspecting your roof every 90 days or three times a season. That's important. Make sure you winterize the trailer before uh, the weather turns, uh, before the temperature goes below freezing. And um, that's the most important things, and I've touched on every major system in here. So, okay, thank you very much.